Hey family, welcome back. Marshawn Olanio here, your favorite life and relationship strategist. And you have continued to come back here because you want to be a part of that top 1% of people who have extraordinary relationships. And today I'm going to talk about seven things. Yeah, I know that's only two fingers. <laughs> seven topics that you must discuss before you get married. You can discuss them afterwards, but of course it's always better if you discuss them beforehand. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. The very first thing, the very first topic that you definitely should discuss is is what a marriage commitment means to you as well as what is commitment a marriage commitment mean to your partner to your spouse what does it mean to be in a committed marriage I know that this might sound like stupid or it might seem like duh um, commitment right but people have different definitions of what being committed means to them so why is my shirt sticking out? Okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, people have different definitions of what being committed means to them. So get a clear picture of what a commitment means to your spouse, as well as you be able to articulate what a commitment means to yourself as well. This will cut down on a lot of the misunderstandings on a lot of the things that you think should be automatically known because this is the way that relationships unfold meanwhile you and your partner you and your spouse did not grow up the exact same way so what they find to be a commitment you might not and vice versa so get a clear picture get a clear understanding so it cuts down on you having to figure this out later on and or if you actually want to continue with this person because maybe what their definition of a commitment means does not match up to anything that you want to be a part of you can find that out and understand that prior to saying i do the second topic that you want to talk about is will we you and your partner will we have gender role expectations and if so what are those gender role expectations i know that in traditional households the women um, especially still nowadays they're working plus taking care of the household plus taking care of the children um, some people don't talk about this stuff but again you if you have a clear picture of what it actually means in your household then you could at least not be surprised so like even in my own household my husband is very traditional and i knew this going into it so i am definitely the person who does the the cleaning portion of it we actually both cook our own separate meals so sometimes i cook for the both of us sometimes he cooks for the both of us but by and large each of us cook our own meals and then i actually cook for me and my daughter most of the time um but with that being said maybe that's not something that you want to actually do in your relationship and um let me just go back because maybe some of you are like why you don't cook for your husband um, my husband is african and he likes to eat a lot of his african dishes and um when i was learning <laughs> he didn't like the way i was learning <laughs> So we have just came to the conclusion that he cooks for himself and I cook for me, um, by and large. Again, there are some exceptions to the rule, but by and large, I cook mine, he cooks his. But what are your gender role expectations? Are you going to cook? Are you going to clean? Are you also going to rear the children? Like, what are they? Lay them out. Are you both going to take on... Um, you know 50 percent of the things are you going to um, switch off on doctor's appointments like what are the roles going to look like for you in your household so again you're not taken by surprise number three how often will erotic and intimate moments happen ideally yes please the pause ideally because <laughs> this is something that's not always going to happen um on your time schedule it's not always going to happen on your spouse's time schedule so ideally what would you like those intimate erotic moments to look like is this something that you need every single day is this something that you need multiple times a day is it something that you only need once or twice a week like what is it have those discussions so again you can see if this is a person that you want to build a life together with the fourth thing, the fourth topic that you must have, how will you two resolve heated conflicts? Like, are you gonna be people that literally just shut down for the rest of the day? Um, I know that some of this stuff sounds like, why would you shut down for the rest of the day? Because listen, this stuff actually happens. So if you're aware of how your 
partner, how your spouse is going to react, how you guys are going to handle the hard um, conversations, the heated conflicts. Are you going to continue to just yell and scream at each other? Are you guys going to say, you know what, we need to time out and then cool off and come back? Like, what are you actually going to do? Have these conversations now. Again, that's going to help you in the long run if you know this information prior to saying I do and even shortly after saying I do. Again, ideally, you want to have these conversations before you get married, but you can always backtrack and have them after you get married. Again, ideal situation is prior to marriage. Number five, what will your what will you guys spiritual life look like together? Will you actually um, go to church together? Will you go to the mosque together? Will you go to um, you know what, what whatever the foundation is? Or are you going to be people that just actually practice prayer at home, reading the Bible at home? Like, what would your spiritual life look like? Are you actually going to have a spiritual life? Is this important enough for you to move the, the marriage forward with the relationship forward with? Or is this an actual deal breaker? This is a conversation that you need to have prior to. Now, this one you need to have prior to because a lot of times people don't understand that religion is one of the top three reasons why people get a divorce. So you want to really have this conversation prior to you getting married. But again, if you did not know this information and you just find in my channel, then definitely, and, and you're on the road to getting married, you guys have gotten serious, but you haven't had the spiritual conversation, the religious conversation, you need to do that because it's never a problem when it's just the, the man and the woman. It's never a problem. It becomes a problem when you guys start to have children and then because if you guys never had this conversation prior to saying I do prior to children and then whenever the children come one person may want you to take them to church other person is like no um, this is where the conflicts actually happen so you can cut down on this specific conversation if you have this conversation prior to saying I do all right that's number five number six how do you believe extramarital affairs happen? Again, this is a conversation that you absolutely should have just so you can get an understanding of what your spouse or partner is thinking. Um, is an emotional affair seen as equal to having a sexual affair? Now, those are the actual two questions. I'll read them back to back. How do you believe extramarital affairs happen? And then the second question is, is an emotional affair seen as equal to a sexual affair? Some people, some people say that emotional affairs are more detrimental to the relationship than sexual affairs are. Yes, they're both bad and they should not happen. However, um, let's be real, a lot of times they do happen. So if you can, again, if you can talk about these things prior to so they know what your expectations are and you don't have to figure this stuff out later on, then um, you already know if it's a deal breaker for your spouse and then you go ahead and do it, then you know you have a chance of losing your family, right? But you still did it. Okay, whatever. But you already knew what the consequences was going to be instead of having to say, you know what? I don't believe in extramarital affairs. And then you have to go through all of this trying to unravel. Do I want to stay? Do I want to go? It's like your partner already know what you expect in the relationship. Um, again, emotional affairs are seen by most people to be more detrimental than sexual affairs but again how are you going to work that in your relationship if it does happen um, but again have an understanding of what your partner believes how they actually start will start the conversation and it'll give you an insight um, an insight view of how you actually can stop these things from occurring if they happen to be you know you feel like something is about to go down that road you can actually you can pretty much stop it um, <laughs> um, and I'm doing that because really it's the your partner your spouse's choice to actually go forward with it no matter how much you guys talk about it but at the end of the day you still want them to have an understanding of where you stand if this happens to happen between you and I I'll leave it at that the number seven topic that you absolutely must have before you get married ideally is about your parents and your in-laws would you ever want them to come and stay come to live would you have like an in-law house um, if they live outside of the country would you want them to be in the country where no matter which country that you're in would you want them to live with you guys 
will you split the holidays between both of your families? Um, in my first marriage, we actually used to do that a lot. We would go to one family at Thanksgiving and then another family at um, Christmas. It never was a big deal for us. It was just something, we actually didn't even discuss it. It was just something that happened. We both loved each other's family, so we just thought it would be a good idea to split the holidays. But again, you have to work that the way that you work it. Me and my, um, me and my husband now we don't even talk about those things because his family is still in Africa and so a lot of times waiting for that vehicle so a lot of times when we do go and visit it usually is my family because they're here in the States um, so so that anyway again or how are you guys gonna split the holidays if you have to and then uh, another deeper question that you want to have is can you guys talk about your relationship with your family members whether it's your your parents whether it's your sibling and then if you can if the answer is yes you can share some things how much are you both going to be allowed to share about what's going on behind closed doors in your household those are the seven questions that you want to be aware of. I know that there was more because there was follow-ups to a couple of them, but those are the main seven questions that you want to be able to ask your partner, that you want to be able to ask your spouse prior to getting married, prior to getting married, so you know the type of person that you're actually dealing with. Again, this is the, the tough conversations that I'll, I'll talk about having, but it's really just the getting to know who you are about to say I do to, who you are saying that you want to build this journey with. Again, you're trying to be a, uh, a part of the top 1% of relationships that have uh, <laughs> couples that have extraordinary relationships. Another way to do that is to ask as many in-depth questions as possible. Have all of the conversations that you know can actually help your relationship, that can have, help you understand who you are lying next to. I love you guys. There's nothing that you can do about it. And if you love this video and if you made it this far, give me a thumbs up. I'll see you guys very, very soon. Bye now.